Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, April 10th, 2021. What a joy it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin today with Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You spared me from among those going down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor a lifetime. Weeping may stay overnight, but there is joy in the morning. When I was secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you showed your favor, you made me stand like a strong mountain. When you hid your face, I was terrified. Lord, I called to you. I sought favor from my Lord. What gain is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your truth? Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. You turned my lament into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, so that I can sing to you and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Israel is now going to arrive at Mount Sinai, and the Lord is going to make preparations for the big event that is going to be happening at Mount Sinai when the Lord gives to his people his law. In the third month from the very day the Israelites left the land of Egypt, they came to the Sinai wilderness. They traveled from Rephidim, came to the Sinai wilderness, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up the mountain to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This is what you must say to the house of Jacob and explain to the Israelites. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will carefully listen to me and keep my covenant, you will be my own possession out of all the peoples, although the whole earth is mine, and you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that you are to say to the Israelites. After Moses came back, he summoned the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people responded together, we will do all that the Lord has spoken. So Moses brought the people's words back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you and will always believe you. Moses reported the people's words to the Lord, and the Lord told Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. They must wash their clothes and be prepared by the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put boundaries for the people all around the mountain and say, be careful that you don't go up on the mountain or touch its base. Anyone who touches the mountain must be put to death. No hand may touch him. Instead, he will be stoned or shot with arrows and not live, whether animal or human. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they may go up the mountain. Then Moses came down from the mountain to the people and consecrated them, and they washed their clothes. He said to the people, be prepared by the third day. Do not have sexual relations with women. On the third day, when morning came, there was thunder and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and a very loud blast from a ram's horn, so that all the people in the camp shuddered. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was completely enveloped in smoke because the Lord came down on it in fire. Its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain shook violently. As the sound of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in the thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. Then the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and he went up. The Lord directed Moses, go down and warn the people not to break through to see the Lord, otherwise many of them will die. 
Even the priests who come near the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out in anger against them. <clears throat> Moses responded to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai since you warned us, put a boundary around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord replied to him, go down and come back with Aaron. But the priests and the people must not break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out in anger against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. We conclude our reading of the letter to the Hebrews with some final exhortations. Let brotherly love continue. Don't neglect to show hospitality, for by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. Remember those in prison as though you were in prison with them and the, and the mistreated as though you're, you yourselves were suffering bodily. Marriage is to be honored by all and the marriage bed kept undefiled because God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you. As you carefully observe the outcome of their lives, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be led astray by various kinds of strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established by grace and not by food regulations, since those who observe them have not benefited. We have an altar from which those who worship at the tabernacle do not have a right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the most holy place by the high priest as a sin offering are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the gate, so that he might sanctify the people by his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing his disgrace. For we do not have an enduring city here. Instead, we seek the one to come. Therefore, through him, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Don't neglect to do what is good and to share, for God is pleased with such sacrifices. Obey your leaders and submit to them, since they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, so that they can do this with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are convinced that we have a clear conscience, wanting to conduct ourselves honorably in everything. And I urge you all the more to pray that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, equip you with everything good to do as well, working in us what is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to receive this message of exhortation, for I have written to you briefly. Be aware that our brother Timothy has been released. If he comes soon enough, he will be with me when I see you. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. Those who are from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with you all. Our writing for today is from Martin Chemnitz. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. This saying of Christ contains the sweet teaching and consolation that when the ministers of the word prove from the word of God that prove from the word of God what they teach, they are to be heard in no other way than as if the voice of God were speaking to us from heaven. For God is present with the ministry and speaks to us through that medium, and it is efficacious, as the Baptist says, I am the voice of one calling. For it is God who calls to the Baptist. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3, Paul says, you desire proof that Christ is speaking in me. Thus, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, he says, God makes his appeal through us. But how? By entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we read in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 21, my spirit, which is upon you, and my words, which I have put in your mouth, and so on. This teaching wins true reverence for the ministry and inclines the mind to obedience, according to the saying in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, 
obey your leaders and submit to them. When the ministers bring and set forth the word of God, the hearers accept it not as the word of men, but as it is indeed the word of God, as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And it is most comforting that we can truly conclude that when we hear the word of God out of the mouth of the minister, the Son of God himself is with us, speaks to us, and is efficacious through that word. For upon this depends what Christ declares. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But this dignity, reverence, obedience, and efficacy of the ministry depend on this, that it brings and sets forth the word of God. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Sing with all the saints in glory. Oh, what glory far exceeding all that I has yet perceived. Holiest hearts for ages pleading never that full joy conceived. God has promised, Christ prepares it. There on high our welcome waits. Every humble spirit shares it. Christ has passed the eternal gates. And we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time together in God's word with me today. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.